Good evening, people of God. Give y'all a second to come on in. Hello, hello, hello. Do me a favor, speak to me as you come in and as you come in, tag and share this. Let somebody know we're on, won't be long at all. Good evening, Pastor Mike. So good to see you, brother. Bless you. on YouTube, you can share this as well. God bless you, Wanda. God bless you, Elizabeth. Good to see you all on tonight. Thank you for sharing. Hey, Nidra. Good to see you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking and for tagging somebody, letting somebody know we're on for a brief conversation. If you don't uh, know me and you are showing up in this space, for the very first time to connect with me, I am Sean Marshall. I am husband. I am a father. I am a pastor. And I'm the author of a book, Transition Decisions, How to Get Unstuck, Embrace Change, and Make Your Next Move Now. I talk about change and transition and how I can help people. That's my mission. That's my assignment is to help people be who God created them to be, do what God created them to do, live the life that God created them to live and to navigate transitions. So this is what I do. I help leaders navigate transition. I help people navigate transition. And uh, this is what God has blessed me to be able to do. I coach, I teach on change and transition because I believe that we come to moments in life where we get stuck because something has shifted, something has changed, and we don't know what to do. We don't know how to respond. We don't know how to handle it. And uh, I believe that God has graced me um, with some wisdom, with some content, with some strategies that can help people to understand how to navigate change. So if that sounds like something that you want to be connected to, do me a favor, head on over to YouTube and subscribe at your next move now. Your next move now. There's a lot of content there. I've talked about last week, we talked about um, healthy transitions, right? We talked about how we can navigate change in healthy ways. Tonight, I want to talk to, to you all real briefly about traumatic transitions. Traumatic transitions. Um, so I worship at the Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. Reverend Dr. Charlie Dates is our pastor. Um, phenomenal uh, job he's been doing leading in the transition, uh, following uh, the long tenure and amazing leadership, founding pastor, Reverend Dr. James T. Meeks. And um, today we were in church, left church. And after church, I received a prayer request. Prayer request was forwarded to me um, from a brother and, and he had indicated that he needed some prayer. So I got was home and um, ended up calling this brother um, to have prayer with him about his challenges. And the first thing he said to me when we got on the call was, Pastor, I feel like Job. I feel like Job. Over the last year, it's just been one thing 
after another thing, after another thing. I beat this illness and they told me I'm dealing with this illness. While I'm dealing with that illness, then my loved one is dealing with this illness. And while this was happening, that happened. Pastor, I don't know what's going on, but I just need, and the brother was screaming out because he felt like it was too much, that it was too much trauma in his transitions. So you've heard me say that change and transition, we use those words interchangeably, right? Change is what happens. Transition is how we respond. Transition is when we go from one thing to the next thing. It's when we leave one season, enter into a new season. It's when we leave one space and enter into a new space. We leave one role, enter into a new role. Um, and oftentimes, those transitions are the result of things maybe that we've been praying for, that we've been seeking, that we desire, that we actually want, right? We have felt a release from this assignment or from this job, and we want a new door to open. So we transition from that role into the next. Uh, the relationship that we're in becomes unhealthy. It becomes toxic. It becomes destructive. So we transition out of that relationship hoping that the new boo situation will be better than the bad boo situation, right? And often when we're navigating change, those changes can be complex. They can be difficult to understand. They could even be sudden. But then there are transitions that we experience that feel like trauma. Now, if you don't know what trauma is, Trauma is when you are left having experienced something that has damaged your psyche in some way. Trauma is when an event or an experience causes you to be impacted in such a way that it becomes difficult for you to move forward in normalcy. Okay, that's trauma. And it's important to realize that trauma is not necessarily the event itself. It is your experience of the event. A few weeks ago, um, I had some relatives who were in a car accident. They were all in the same car. There's three of them. They're in one car. They had a terrible car accident. One of my relatives, they all survived. They all, none of them were injured. Hey, God bless you, Susan. Good to see you, uh, Tanya. None of them were injured. Praise God. They walked away. Car was totaled. All three of them walked away from the accident. Praise the Lord. Uh, but the next day, one of my relatives got into a car. No problem. He was fine. My other relative had been shaky about getting into cars because that event, that experience impacted her differently than it impacted him, right? And so two people can have the exact same experience, can be in the exact same event, can be in the exact same moment and be having a different experience. Two, just like two people can be watching the same movie. And one of them last week, Tyler Perry uh, came out with a movie online and uh, through, through Netflix, I think, Tyler Perry came out with a movie. Half of my timeline is like, this is this movie is great. The other half of my timeline was like, this movie was terrible. Y'all watch the same movie. What happened is you experienced it differently, right? So two people can be in the same moment having a completely different experience. And so what trauma is, is when the experience leaves a mark on you. And as I was talking to that brother, it occurred to me that many of us are stuck because we've gone through some traumatic transitions. Now, here's something that you need to know about trauma, because I'm actually trained as a therapist. I'm trained to do therapy. It's funny. I went to grad school to be a therapist, and then I got called into ministry, and I was mad because I said, now, Lord, what am I going to do with all this clinical stuff I've learned? I'm, I'm going to be a minister now. What am I going to do with it? 
And God laughed because he knew exactly what I would be doing with it in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you go through trauma, one of the things that you can emerge from trauma with is something called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And what that is, is when the traumatic experience that you went through now creates a psychological limitation whereby when you experience events or stressors similar to that traumatic experience or when you experience any type of intense stressor, the memory of that traumatic experience is actually resident within your body and you begin to respond in ways that summon the trauma again. So here's what I'm trying to, this is the point that I'm making. Many of us cannot navigate the transition that we're in because we're still dealing with the trauma of previous transitions. Many of us are struggling to navigate the changes of the relationship that we're in because we have not reconciled the trauma of the relationships that we were in. Many of us are struggling to make vocational decisions, career decisions in the present because we've not reconciled the trauma of previous vocational experiences the trauma of being fired from a job you loved, the trauma of that company being downsized and now everybody lost their jobs, the trauma of you going in excited, happy that God blessed you with the job, having prayed for the job, and the trauma of one day praying and believing that God would deliver you from the job that you prayed for. What do you do when you are experiencing the traumatic transition that comes from begging and pleading with God for God to deliver you from the thing that you prayed for. So many of us are dealing with post-transition stress disorder. So we're stressed about the decisions that we're trying to make in the present because we've not reconciled properly the transitions that we've experienced in the past. I got one verse, one verse for you. Somebody type it. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 19. Verses 19. Actually, I lied. It's three verses. Verses 19 through 20. This is Joseph. And we know the story of Joseph. Joseph was hated by his brothers because Joseph was favored by their father, Jacob. Joseph had favor because he was Rebekah's son, one of Rebekah's sons. Joseph was loved. Joseph had a dream, actually had two dreams. And the Lord was giving him sneak previews of what his future would hold. And his brothers couldn't take it. They hated him the more and they rejected him. They threw him in a pit, first plotting to kill him and then deciding, no, we ain't going to kill him. We're just going to leave him to be found for dead. We're going to leave him. Maybe some animal will come get him, right? So they leave him in this pit. It's one transition. The transition of experiencing pain from people that are close to you. The traumatic transition of going through pain that was caused by people that you would never expect to cause you pain. So Joseph experiences this traumatic transition. Then he's delivered from the pit, but he's delivered from the pit into slavery. So then there's the traumatic transition of being in a bad situation and God delivers you from a bad situation to a slightly better bad situation. <laughs> I'm out of the pit, but I'm in slavery. 
Okay. So now he's in the traumatic transition of one time being at home with his family, rejected by them, thrown in his pit. Now he's delivered. So he goes from one bad situation to a better bad situation. Then the traumatic transition of not responding to the advances, the sexual advances from Potiphar's wife, only to be lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated. Thank you, Vicky Winans. And for his, watch this, the traumatic transition of his integrity being questioned, the traumatic transition of having to now be betrayed and lied on when you know you did right. I know I'm not gonna catch anybody with this one because I know I, I, I know there are very few people who have ever had to navigate the traumatic transition of having somebody lie on you, say something about you that was not true, and you can't defend yourself. You have to let people believe the lie. The traumatic transition of I cannot defend my own name. So he goes through that transition and then gets delivered from that place. Hey, auntie, I love you. It's good to see you today. I'm going to call you tonight. Gets delivered from that situation then into prison for doing what was right, for doing what was just, for doing what he should have done, for running from sin, gets delivered into prison. And through those experiences, through those traumatic transitions, God is at work navigating him to exactly the place he needed to be. Pastor Dates preached an incredible message this morning. Go to SalemChicago.org, watch it. He's talking about how God uses the betrayal of people and the disappointments of relationships to get you to exactly where, you want, where he wants you to be. Here's what I came to, Genesis 50. Genesis 50, watch this. Genesis 50 and verse 19. But Joseph said to them, so now his brothers are in Egypt. Joseph is the governor of Egypt. Joseph has interpreted the dream of Pharaoh and because he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh and gave him a strategy to respond to Pharaoh's dream about a coming famine. He has been promoted and now he's in exactly the place that God showed him he would be despite those transitions, okay? And his brothers come to him essentially and they say, hey, you're not still mad about when we threw you in that pit, right? They're trying to make sure that Joseph doesn't have a day when he thinks about what they did and tries to take revenge on them. But this is what Joseph says in verse 19. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for am I in God's place? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to preserve many people alive. Watch this. How do you navigate traumatic transitions? How do you survive? How do you make it through when you're going through traumatic transitions? This is what you have to learn how to do. One point tonight, you have to learn how to tell your story. Joseph said, you know, I could go with the storyline that through these traumatic transitions, I could say, yeah, this is what they did to me. I could say, man, my brothers were wicked. They were evil. I could say, yeah, 
everybody's always had it out for me. I could say, I don't know why people have always lied on me. I could tell this story as if I'm the victim in the story. I could tell the story and I could emphasize the trauma of the story. I could tell the story and I could talk about how bad you treated me and what you did to me. And I could tell the story and talk about how many times I ended up in a situation where my refrain was, I didn't do anything to deserve this. I could tell the story that way, or I could tell the story that in every traumatic experience that I had, when you rejected me, when you put me in bondage, when you lied on me, when you threw me into prison, when you forgot me, I could tell the story by saying through it all, God was right there. I could tell the story and say what I've learned is that God can take my trauma and use my trauma to build my testimony. I can say that God actually used the trauma to place me where he ordained me to be all along. I don't know what you have to do. You hear me talk about therapy. I think therapy and counseling is a great way to analyze the events of your life and realize a different way you can tell your story. Some of you may have to find a coach. You may have to find a mentor, find a group, find a church home, right? Well, I've been in church before and them church people, they just fake and That's why I ain't in church now. And I got church, church. I understand. I understand. I understand. I really, I'm not minimizing it. I just have one question for you. How long are you going to run with that story? And where do you think that version of the story is going to leave you? It's time for you to conspire with God because God is the author and the finisher of your faith. My mentor, Dr. Chan says this, he says, don't let the devil write your last paragraph. This, the enemy of my soul is not going to write my story. My pain is not going to tell my story. I'm going to retell my story. I'm going to re-examine my life. I'm going to reassess my experiences. Recognize how God was at work and tell my story differently. Because when I learn how to tell my story, I can realize the treasures that I've picked up in the trauma. God does not allow, hear me, God does not allow trauma that doesn't leave you with a treasure. Somebody type that. <clears throat> God does not allow trauma that doesn't leave you with a treasure. When I go through trauma, God's gonna bless me with some treasure. God's gonna give me some power because God doesn't waste pain. So this year, before the year moves on, before this first quarter ends, I'm gonna need you to do whatever you need to do to learn how to tell your story. Father, I thank you for your people. And I thank you that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, strengthen us, help to shift our perspective. 
Help us to see our life the way that you see it. And help us to recognize how in every traumatic situation, you've been present. In every pain, you've extracted purpose. Through the hurt and through the heartache, you've held us, you've carried us. And you've ordained it. And you didn't start the mess, but you fixed it. And you worked it out for the good of those who are the called according to his purpose. You not only brought me out, but you used that pain to help me bring out others. Help me, Lord, to know how to tell my story so that I can move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. And a Man, do me a favor, go to your next move now on YouTube, subscribe. <clears throat> if this blessed you, if this encouraged you, share it. It's, it wasn't too deep. I didn't need to get five points tonight. Figure out how to retell the story of your life so that you can see how God has been at work in spite of that trauma that you've gone through. All right. This has been a blessing to you. Feel free to sow. But it's time for you to tell a different story about your life. God has been good. God has been faithful. And God has been present. Doesn't mean it didn't hurt. Doesn't mean you didn't want to cry. Doesn't mean you didn't want to cuss. Didn't mean you didn't want to scream. But guess what? It doesn't mean that your life is over either. God can turn that trauma into a testimony that he can use for his glory. God bless y'all. Have an amazing week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.